Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Biochemistry Concepts. This video is about digestion and absorption of proteins. Sources of dietary proteins. The proteins in the diet, they are mainly obtained from the two sources. One is plant source and the second one is animal source. Principal animal sources are milk and dairy products, meat, fish, liver, eggs. And principal vegetable sources are cereals, pulses, peas, beans and nuts. So these dietary proteins are denatured on cooking. Denatured proteins are easily digested and enzymes that are involved in the digestion of proteins are called as proteolytic enzymes. All these enzymes are hydrolases and these enzymes convert proteins into amino acids. And these proteolytic enzymes are secreted as inactive zymosins which are converted to their active form in the intestinal lumen. This would prevent the auto digestion of the secretory SNI. Digestion of proteins in the mouth. Proteins are not digested in mouth due to the absence of proteoses in saliva. After mastication and chewing, the bolus of food reaches stomach. Digestion in stomach. Food bolus when enters the stomach, it stimulates the secretion of the hormone gastrin from the gastric mucosal cells. So this gastrin stimulates the release of gastric juice containing hydrochloric acid and proteolytic enzymes that is pepsin, renin, gastricin and gelatinase. So the hydrochloric acid secreted by the parietal cells unfolds the proteins and activates the proteolytic enzyme pepsin. So this type of activation is called as zymosin activation. Coming to action of pepsin, it is secreted as inactive form that is pepsinogen. It is synthesized in the chief cells and 99% is poured into the gastric juice as pepsinogen. So 1% is secreted into the bloodstream from where it is excreted in the urine. So this urinary pepsin is known as uropepsin. Pepsinogen is hydrolyzed in stomach with the help of hydrochloric acid or pepsin itself to form active pepsin. So in the process of activation, an active peptide called as pepsin inhibitor and five small peptides are liberated. Optimum pH for pepsin is 1.6 to 2.5. So hydrochloric acid maintains the gastric pH at about 1 to 2 and ensures the maximum pepsin activity. Pepsin is a proteinase, a non-specific endopeptidase and it hydrolyzes peptide bonds well inside the protein molecule and produces proteoses and peptones. Pepsin is active on peptide bond which connects the carboxylic group of an aromatic amino acid like phenylalanine and tyrosine with the amino group of either a dicarboxylic or an aromatic amino acid. Action of pepsin on milk. Pepsin acts on the milk protein that is casein and converts that into paracasein. So this paracasein reacts with calcium to form calcium paracaseinate which is a precipitate. Again pepsin acts on this calcium paracaseinate and converts that into peptones. Coming to action of second enzyme that is renin. Renin is absent in adult humans. Certain amount of renin activity is seen in babies in infancy. So the optimum pH is 4.0. This renin hydrolyzes the peptide bonds connected with aromatic amino acids. So renin acts on casein of milk to form paracasein which is immediately precipitated by calcium as calcium paracasinate. Coming to third enzyme, gastricin. It is secreted as inactive zymosin and activated in the presence of hydrochloric acid. The optimum pH is 3 to 4. It acts as proteinase. And the fourth enzyme is gelatinase. It hydrolyzes gelatin to form polypeptides. Digestion in the duodenum. 
ஃபுட் போலர்ஸ் ஆஃப்டர் லீவிங் தி ஸ்டமக் ரீச்சஸ் அடியோடினம் வேர் இட் மீட்ஸ் வித் பேங்க்ரியாட்டிக் ஜூஸ் A number of proteolytic enzymes are present in the pancreatic juice to act on the proteins and partly digested products. So the chief enzymes which are present in the pancreatic juice are trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, elastase and collagenases. Trypsin. Trypsin is a proteinase and it is secreted as inactive zymogen form that is trypsinogen which is activated to form the active trypsin enterokinase which is a glycoprotein enzyme converts trypsinogen into hexapeptide and trypsin so hexapeptide is inactive form and trypsin is active so this active trypsin itself can convert the trypsinogen into active form by autocatalysis trypsin optimum ph is 8 to 9 Trypsin can hydrolyze peptide bonds formed by carboxylic group of arginine and lysine. Chymotrypsinogen is converted into chymotrypsin by trypsin. Trypsin hydrolyzes the native proteins particularly the basic proteins by splitting the peptide bond connected with the carbonyl groups of basic amino acids like arginine and lysine and forms various polypeptides proteases peptones tri and dipeptides trypsin also activates the proelastase to elastase and fibrinogen to fibrin so in this way when it is converting fibrinogen to fibrin it can coagulate the blood though trypsin is a strong proteolytic enzyme it cannot hydrolyze any peptide bond with proline residues coming to action of chymotrypsin chymotrypsin is secreted as inactive zymogen that is as chymotrypsinogen which is activated by trypsin so once trypsin converts chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin the formed chymotrypsin itself can activate chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin by autocatalysis The optimum pH of chymotrypsin is 7 to 8. It hydrolyzes peptide bonds which are connected with carbonyl groups of aromatic amino acids like phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan. Chymotrypsin converts the proteases, peptones and peptides to smaller peptides and amino acids. Coming to action of carboxypeptidases, there are two types of carboxypeptidases that is carboxypeptidase A and b carboxypeptidase a it is a metalloenzyme with zinc as the metal ion it is secreted as inactive zymogen pro carboxypeptidase a carboxypeptidase a is an exopeptidase it hydrolyzes the terminal peptide bond connected to an end amino acid which has a free alpha carboxyl group particularly if the end amino acid is tyrosine phenylalanine or tryptophan carboxypeptidase b it is also an exopeptidase it also hydrolyzes terminal peptide bonds connected with basic amino acids for example amino acids like arginine lysine bearing the free carboxylic group coming to action of elastase and collagenase elastase it is a serine protease secreted as inactive zymogen pro elastase and this is activated by trypsin to its active form that is elastase the enzyme has maximum activity on peptide bonds connected to carboxylic groups of neutral aliphatic amino acids for example alanine serine glycine collagenase it is an enzyme which acts on the peptide bonds in the collagen coming to intestinal digestion the oligopeptidases act on the oligopeptides and convert them into tri and dipeptides so enzymes like amino peptidase tripeptidase dipeptidase they finally convert these peptides into amino acids coming to absorption of the amino acids absorption of amino acids 
occurs mainly in the small intestine and it is an energy requiring process. Amino acids are absorbed by sodium dependent active process which is linked with the transport of sodium ions. So as the sodium ions diffuse along the concentration gradient, the amino acid also enters the intestinal cell. Both sodium and amino acids, they share a common carrier and they are transported together into the intestinal cell. And the energy is supplied indirectly by ATP. Another transport system for the transport of amino acids is gamma glutamyl cycle. It mainly takes place in the intestine, kidney and brain. So the main role is played by the tripeptide glutathione which is called as gamma glutamyl cysteine glycine. So this glutathione reacts with amino acid to form gamma glutamyl amino acid. This is catalyzed by gamma glutamyl transferase. So the gamma glutamyl amino acid is then cleaved to give free amino acid. The net result is the transfer of an amino acid across the membrane. For the transport of one molecule of amino acid and regeneration of active form of glutathione that is GSH, it requires three molecules of ATP.